but we also had budgeted yeah. fundraising. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Steve Davis is going to lead us in the pledge today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Charlie Green finishing a bite. He's going to do uh, invocation. I hope nobody thinks I'm unpatriotic for not participating in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, but I took a monster bite of Reuben. <laughs> I had to get the invocation. This is not much of an invocation. Um, it's from a line from a, a, a blues singer named uh, Kid Ramos. But I always thought if you had no golden rule, no 12 commandments, uh, no other moral code to live by, this would be a good start. <clears throat> Gratitude is riches, complaint is poverty, and I can't blame none of y'all for what I've been doing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Short, short and sweet, too. <laughs> so the sign-up sheet is going around. I, I'm remiss so in... Um, reminding people through email that they signed up for things. So uh, it, when you do sign up, please uh, note in your calendar. Uh, we still need various people through the end of, uh, or the middle of the year. Um, music of the world isn't well signed up. Um, I usually fill something in if somebody doesn't. Uh, but uh, please, if you have music you like or something you find from around the world, please um, sign up for that too. So, All right, guests. We have guests today. Tony. Sure. Well, I'm happy to have the, the microphone. <laughs> I'm actually uh, happy to have our son, Anthony, uh, here today with us. Uh, he actually works, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. He actually works at the YMCA down in the Quad Cities. So <laughs> glad to have him here as our guest. Thank you. Would you like to say something? You may if you wish. I'm okay. All right. Let's ask him. You look, you look like you were going to. But. So the YMCA is all in the family. Right. Yeah. What's your, right. favorite, what's your favorite song? I think I know. <laughs> so I want to say thanks to HR for hosting the meeting last week. And I have to say, I took a little bit of pleasure in some of the uh, media things just because it was not just me. We <laughs> almost <laughs> No, you did figure it out. You, you, you were good on the fly. I don't know what it was because you know how you're in a high stress situation, you figure it out and you don't remember what you did. Right. So hopefully next time. Yeah. Nice well, but thank like you for that. filling in for me. I appreciate that. Kenny Rogers. Again? Dead now. <laughs> All right, so we did hear back from the Salvation Army on our bell ringing from uh, last December on an extremely cold day. I don't remember what the temperatures were that day, but it was it was frigid. It was cold. And we raised um, $2,864.49 that day. So. And I'm amazed at the generosity of, of some people um, coming out of the stores and some that you think they might need some help too and they're they're generous so it's it's great to see um, so we have to pick a date on the red cross blood drive um, the three dates we have available right now are june uh, june 3rd 9th or the 21st um, and steve uh, guys you had said we probably need about six volunteers or so um, so i guess part of it is just picking a date i don't know if there's a if people have a preference on a date, the 9th is Wednesday. You know, calendars are all over the place. I'm inclined to pick the 9th, which is a Wednesday, middle of the week. Sounds good. Okay. So, just make a call and go with it, right? All right, June 9th? June 9th. Okay. And Steve, do you know how the hours usually work for that? We can pick it, but uh, traditionally it's like 12 to 5. 12 to 5, okay. Yeah. But we can move it earlier in the morning if, you, if the group wants, yeah. Okay. But most of them are 12 to 5. Yeah. All right. All right. And officer elections, HR uh, talked about it last week, mentioned it. Anything you'd like to add there? Uh, no. No. 
Yes. Now you have yes. to. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Because I got. To, I just finished up with NC Pets. Three weeks of leadership training instead of two days. Okay, it was all online. <clears throat> and part of that was, pick, you know, making sure that the leadership continues and you you carry the the club forward. And talking about those who have been in the club for 15, 20, 30, 40 years and trying to recruit the new members. And it's very important to have good leadership and, and motivational leadership. Um, and leadership with ideas and things that we maybe tried 20 years ago that you know didn't work or a, a project that you know you've been, it's been percolating in the back of your head. So I've talked to some of you uh, regarding some leadership positions, possibly stepping up. If you've served, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago as president, it's a whole new world. Uh, here's a chance again. Uh, but hopefully we will get a good a good crop because we had, geez, we had runoffs last year. One was, was rotary primaries last year. We had so many people apply. So hopefully those people apply again, and it'll be a great, great year next year and, and coming forward. Thank you. And did you communicate last week um, how they can nominate others or sign up? Yes. Yeah. yeah. If uh, people are not in the room, they can write down somebody else's name. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how most of the board got on. Do we have paper slips going around? I didn't. I'm not the president. <laughs> <laughs> You're the incoming president. <laughs> I did, I've done deals on cocktail napkins. Everybody write it on a cocktail napkin. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, anybody who would like to um, nominate themselves, please do, uh, or nominate somebody else in the club. Not an ego thing. No, it's a leadership. Thing. It's a leadership thing. Yes. All right. Happy dollars. Community announcements. Who's happy? Happy dollars, right here. Well, last week, some of you may remember I wore this green Irish uh, dress. Well, what you may not have noticed, uh, some of the ladies I, I explained, right before I went out the door, I dropped my lipstick. This stuff. And I had the wand out of it, and it hit the dress on the way to the floor. That stuff is like paint. And I thought, oh my, this is going to be done for. It. And I almost said something last week at Happy Dollars, and I thought, Somebody looking at me, wondering, why the hell she wear that dress with that goober on there? Of course. <laughs> well, I got home, looked to see what I had for spot remover. I got this stuff I would call Tech, and I gave it a couple of squirts, and let it sit, and took a wet uh, cloth and wiped it. Ah, fine, George, quite a bit, but came loose, and I have this other stuff called Grandma's Spot Remover. I gave that a couple of squirts and let it sit for a bit. Well, fine, George, it came pretty well out. I was amazed. And it didn't do too much for the color, but it went, lightened up the color a little bit. Probably nobody would notice it for me. And I thought, oh, hell, I don't like that. So it had these little satin flowers scattered throughout it. I thought, well, I'll just move one of those and stick them on top of it. Well, those things were attached with like a little ribbon instead of sewed off. So I ripped one off and I glued it on there. And then I flipped it inside out and put a little glue on the back of the fabric to glue the hole back together again. I moved three of them. If you looked at the dress now, you'll never, never know anything happened to it. So I'm happy I didn't have to throw it out. <laughs> Long story. Long story. Long story. I have a little game. I'm going to give 16 happy dollars if somebody can say, Why, Joyce, are you selecting 16? What's anybody want to guess? Why would she select 16? The granddaughter's turning 16. No, Vicky. Dirt. How many years you've lived in a view? Close, but no. Anybody else? How many wives are kidnapped? <laughs> <laughs> well, for a cat, so that's not it. My, my beloved Razorbacks are in the Sweet 16. Yeah. So, woo, big suey. Sorry about those hawks, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, but tough. Anyway, 16 happy dollars. It's the first time in 25 years. 1996 was the last time the Razorbacks made it as far as um, the Sweet 16. They won the national championship in 1994, came in second in 1995, and haven't made it since. I'll give $16. Wow! <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. You had to bring up the Hawkeye thing, didn't you? Yeah. You know, just rub yeah, it yeah, in. Yeah, but Gar- Garza scored record points in that game. Almost half the points for the team. Yeah. 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 Any recognition we can get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, interesting. That Oregon, the, the five starters had all the points, no points from the bench, and Iowa had two starters with points, three with zero, and more from the bench. So, very interesting, to say the least. All right, Marianne, you're, any other happy dollars? Following up on the Hawkeyes for a loss. Let's get happy again. Yeah. No more? All right. So, uh, Marianne, your raffle. Yay, here she comes. I got your microphone. All right. Well, three prizes, a book that Amy Gilligan authored and brought as a prize. She bought two of them, I'm going to save the other one for next week, in case we don't have anything else. It's hysterical. One of them. Very nice book. I brought this bottle of wine from home because somebody gave it to me, and I don't care for sweet wine, so <laughs> I can drink it if I really does drink it. Free gifter. <laughs> and this is the white elephant with a milk glass jar that I had at home. I don't need. You can put your pocket change in it, or M and M's, or peanuts, or whatever. Anything but milk. Yes. So we so we could use uh, raffle items. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So would you like the thirty-two dollars today? Yeah. There you go. So, Amy, you want to draw since you're the speaker today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Steve Davis. Hey, Steve, Steve Davis. Hey, with two teenagers and one more on the way, definitely take the book. <laughs> you need all the help you can get, right? Good right. choice. I heard she'll <laughs> autograph it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I got a pen. It was almost like this. Yeah, you should get the wine too. <laughs> Make her write all the names of your kids. Steve, that you one. should have the wine and the book because yeah. after you read the book, you might need the Scott wine. Scott Ellerbach. Scott Ellerbach, right back there. There he is. Scott Ellerbach, all right. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yes, personally delivered. Congratulations. All right, good. Tony! Tony! I'm going to donate my prize to anybody else that you draw next. <laughs> <laughs> well, how generous. All right. One more. Nobody wants my white elephant. Uh, Gary Olson. I want that white <laughs> elephant. Oh, <laughs> damn. All right. I'll think of you every time I put my change right. in it. Put it right put there. there yes, yes. Your, your teeth, you know. Oh, whatever. my teeth, yes. I could put, <laughs> I had teeth to put in. I would. Scott Goings wanted me to mention the golf committee is going to have a meeting next week. We're going to start planning for the golf outing. We've got to evaluate that, see if we can put it on. Um, they do need some volunteers for that committee, so anybody who's willing and able to help, that would be appreciated. There you go. Right there. Thank you. There we go. All right. All right. Good deal. That's perfect. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So next week, right after this meeting. Yep. All right. All right. So I'll turn it over to John to introduce Amy, our speaker. Well, and I was going to do a happy dollar because Bob Woodward was going to be here and introduce Amy Gilligan. And he texted me this morning and said he wasn't able to be here. He, he went and played the spring break card, and he's home from Florida, quarantining. <laughs> so he's, he's not able to be here today. So I get to introduce Amy, um, and she has been with the TH now 30 years plus. Uh, She's chaired the editorial board. She's been a member um, of the board more than 25 years and I'm the writer of most of the TH articles. So the ones that you like and agree with, she's the author and the ones that you don't were probably somebody else. Um, I wrote the humor column for many years, which is gonna come handy in a moment, um, and published two books that were a collection. She donated two of them today. Became the executive director in 2016, and I'm married, she's married. I'm reading it here. Uh, She's married to District Court Judge Michael Shubat, and they have four children. 
And so I was thinking, you know, what can I do a little bit of, of reconnaissance to um, add to what, what we've got here? And um, so we all know that the candy bars we buy these days, she's wondering where I'm going with this, are now half the size and twice the cost of what we used to be able to buy. And then we've all noticed that the paper's gone a little bit smaller. So I snuck into their strategic planning room, their sort of war room at the TH this morning. She, doesn't even, she didn't even know I snuck in there. And, and just to see where it was going. And I got an advanced copy of, of our future TH. <laughs> and and it's, not, it's not too bad. Gary, you're going to want to move because Amy's going to want to see this. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I mean, it's got sports. Hang on a minute. It's got a sport. There's a business page. We've got the business page. Here's sports. We've got the sports. The only trouble is I really like to do the crossword puzzle, and it makes it really small. But I did see somewhere on the notes that, that if you, when you take a year's subscription, they send you a, a magnifying glass, so that will help. Please welcome Amy Gilligan. Thanks for having me today. So I brought a few notes, but I'm mostly just going to talk and then uh, kind of tell you about uh, our crazy last year and uh, take some questions from you as well. So uh, I graduated from Iowa State University in 1988, and uh, my first job was at the Fort Dodge Messenger, where I made $12,500 a year. And uh, I remember when I got that job, my engineer friends at Iowa State were like, yeah, that's not really that much money. And I, I, I mean, that was really news to me. I was like, it's $12,000, you know, when you're in college. I was like, that is so much money. But uh, what I didn't know uh, at that time, you know, I knew I had studied journalism and, and thought I knew something about that, but I really didn't know much about our industry, uh, the newspaper industry. I think they do a better job today of, of helping kids learn a little bit more about our, the business side of things. Uh, so that's all been on the job training for me. But at that time, I, I certainly didn't know that I, it was a bit of a the heyday. Um, you know, the, the amount of advertising that, that we were selling in the, in the you know, 80s and 90s uh, it was, was remarkable, um, really, compared to where we are today. The profit margins of, of newspapers in, in those days would make a grocer cry. Uh, you know, it was really quite something and uh, but I, I came to the TH uh, in 1990 and uh, and as John said I've, I've, I've held several different jobs over the years but uh, I've been in my current role uh, for the last uh, little over four years so um, but uh, we I'm going to start back to uh, since you all know Bob I'll kind of kind of tell you a little bit about uh, my connection to Bob and and uh, his new role as publisher so um, he became publisher in the end of 2019 or fall of 2019, and uh, we—I had known Bob because Bob's uh, cousin Tom is our president, and and Bob and Tom—I worked with both of their fathers, Bill Woodward and and Bob Woodward Jr. Um, were there when I came there. Marianne knows those folks well. And, uh, you know, the Woodwards did a great job of, I think, you know, there wasn't, uh, when, when the next generation come, came in, it wasn't just hand them some, you know, cushy, cushy job. They really wanted them to learn the business, and they all spent time uh, learning various jobs. So when I was a young copy editor, uh, Tom Woodward sat beside me and kind of learned my job and did that. They did some reporting. They went out and covered stories. Bob took a lot of photos. Um, and I always thought that was kind of a cool thing for a family business that they really, really made them learn the business and learn a bit, little bit about what everybody does and it helped them kind of understand the, the company and, and discern maybe where they wanted to go from there. So uh, flash forward to, uh, to the end of 2019 and, and I was on a committee that was helping uh, to, to figure out who our next publisher was going to be. And I eventually started to think of it now as the What About Bob committee because that's kind of what happened. You know, we we interviewed some, some very qualified candidates from all over the country, and, and then we sort of were looking around one day and said, well, what about Bob, you know? Um, and, you know, when your name's on the, on the front of the building, uh, maybe it's not literally on the front of the building, but 
he, he, we knew that no one would have, you know, the heart and the passion for, for this, for the company uh, as much as Bob. And, and he came in, it was a difficult time. I mean, at this point, we didn't, we didn't know about COVID-19. We didn't know what, what the future was holding for us. But, you know, we did know, you know, that our industry had been hit hard by, by the internet and by changes in advertising. Um, you know, uh, huge, the, the price of newsprint, um, the, the flyers, you know, the, uh, the inserts that, as we call them, uh, like the Target ad, the Kohl's ad, um, those things were, were fewer and further between. You know, we had lost Yonkers, who, who had had, you know, the way Yonkers used to advertise, um, and, and Sears, and, you know, we're starting to really see some changes. So it was, it was a difficult time. So we, one of the first things Bob was tasked with doing was getting our budget together for 2020. And so we made our plans and set our initiatives and uh, got off to a pretty good start in January and February, and we were feeling pretty good about it. And then COVID-19 hits. So just a little over a year ago, um, we, we sat together in a, in a staff room for the last time. It was Friday the 13th of March. And said, geez, I guess we shouldn't really be sitting this close to one another. And at that point, we made the decision to have people start working from home. So many departments in our building began working from home and have not been back since. Um, uh, most people in the newsroom stayed. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult for us to, to work remotely, uh, but, but some, some have been and have been throughout. Folks with some underlying issues or, you know, somebody at home who was ill or for whatever reason, um, we have a few people. But for the most part, people in the newsroom have been coming in, um, coming in every day. But we, we have a big building, so with all those other people, when, when advertising moved out and uh, human resources and various departments, we spread our folks out throughout the building. So we're all six feet apart. Uh, we, don't, we don't get together in conference rooms. We, we still meet virtually like everybody else in the world um, <clears throat> and try to communicate that way. So, so that was kind of the, the first step, and um, you know, it became apparent pretty quickly that that this was going to have a huge impact on our business, on every business in our community, education, worship, you know, the arts, uh, concerts, events, e everything you can think of. And so this was also going to be the biggest news story of our lifetimes. And uh, so we, you know, embarked in trying to, trying to report on that. And obviously the healthcare piece was the biggest piece of all. It was the thing that readers were most concerned about. So we committed to, to tracking our, our local numbers and focusing on those and reporting those out three times a day. And uh, started, you know, I've, I've always been, I mean, because of my humor column and stuff and I do some public speaking, so I, I talk to a lot of readers. Be readers are not afraid to, to pick up the phone and call me, send me an email. but. In the last year, I mean, I don't know if it's if it's grown tenfold, but probably pretty close. And and people are reaching out. Hey, what about this? Why don't you look into this? Um, and and somewhere along the line, in like late summer, we began to see that the numbers that we were tracking, there was discrepancies in what the state was providing. And so we started to question those numbers and press back on the state. And and we wrote a lot of articles and editorials. Um, and eventually the state did acknowledge that there was some, that there was a problem with some of their reporting and they, we were able to fix a couple of, a couple of things uh, and that reporting was, was primarily Jeff Montgomery and Dustin Cass, our managing editor, and uh, that won Jeff the, the, the Skip Harrison Investigative Reporting Award for the state this year, from last year and uh, the Iowa Newspaper Association also created a COVID, a special award for COVID coverage, and uh, we got first place in that as well. So I was really proud of those two things and, and that work we were doing. But, you know, we also felt like, I mean, for us, local's the franchise, right? We're, we're local newspaper, that's why people, there's a lot of information you can get a lot of places, but what we cover, you know, going to city council meetings, going to school board meetings, combing through budgets, uh, all that stuff. N nobody's doing that except for the Telegraph Herald, for our community. And we feel equally, you know, that, that local business is a huge part of what we do. You know, we rely on them, they rely on us. Um, and so to see our business community 
take the hit that it took in the last year was was really difficult. And so we really tried to see, well, what can we do with our reporting? What can we do editorially uh, to support our business community? And we, you know, we ran lists of these are the these are the restaurants that are open for carryout. These are, you know, the pandemic pivot. What what's everybody doing? Talked about all different aspects of local business and what folks were doing differently. Uh, to, to accommodate and, and to help and try to, you know, provide some help that way. And then our advertising department, Mike Fortman, our, our group director of advertising, he had the idea to do, um, how did he call that, like a, like a local business grant program, you know. That, that's what advertising people would call it in the newsroom. We'd be like, it's a half price sale. But they, what they, they, he called it a grant program. So, like, if you buy $1,000 in advertising, we'll give you $1,000 in advertising. And that, that was, you know, we, we gave away, you know, a half million dollars in advertising. We also got a half million dollars in advertising, which is great because we needed it. Um, but still, the, you know, advertising was down. Paper was smaller. Um, we did get the PPP money, so that helped us get through the summer. But we still had to have... Uh, all of our hourly employees furloughed. Uh, they all worked 32-hour weeks for much of the summer, which meant all of the managers, you know, there wasn't any less work to do. In fact, there was more. Um, so all of the managers, you know, were filling in those gaps. So it was, I worked, I'm sure I worked more hours in 2020 than I ever have in, in any year. Um, <clears throat> but so, so as we're plowing through all of that, we also began to see, you know, but this, I mean, you think about like end of last summer, it was really, you know, it was impossible to know where this was headed or would everything ever go back to normal or what were we looking at? So, so we were meeting and, you know, Bob and, and some of the other uh, folks in, in our operation to the directors to try to talk about what, you know, what we could do and that's, that's where we came onto the topic of, of dropping days of print and possibly moving our printing site. So we had been printing in, in Cedar Rapids for about five years. And, uh, you know, we'd had the Woodward Printing Services in Platteville for, for many years. But th that was really never out outfitted to, to print a daily paper um, and didn't, didn't have the, the manpower or the equipment. But we started to think about, well, what if... It, did. You know, what if we made those purchases, made that investment, and got them up to speed so that we could print there? So we knew that one of the things was it would have to be smaller because it was just a smaller press. Um, we just couldn't uh, accommodate the larger size. And I felt that uh, now we would used Platteville a little bit like on election night um, because getting our deadline. And when we were going to Cedar Rapids, our deadline was so early that, you know, you couldn't get in good election results. So on election nights, we would always print the A section, just one section in Platteville. And then we could go to midnight or something and get results in. So on election days um, for the past, you know, over the last, you know, five years, um, the A section was always a little bit different shape than the rest of the paper because that was printed one place and... So we knew that they could do it, but to, they had to expand capacity to do multiple sections. So um, I, I really felt all along, I, I was not concerned about sort of selling to readers the idea that the paper would be smaller. I, I felt like we could do you know, a good job with the layout and design so that it would sort of still feel like your paper. Um, and, and we knew the printing quality was so superior. And the paper, and I kept talking about the paper. I wrote about it in my column, and I'm sure readers were like, "Well, what about the, the weight of the paper?" You know, yeah. Well, now people get it because it does feel weightier. Uh, the reproduction is so good that you know the photos really pop. I think so. Um, so I wasn't worried about that piece. I was worried about the drop in a day of the week. Um, you know, I I have a lot of journalism buddies and a lot of different papers, and you've seen a lot of papers that dropped a day of the week, and it was the beginning of the end, you know, and uh, didn't, did, that concerned me a lot. Um, but Bob's a data guy, you know, he wants the data, and so we didn't, we didn't go into this on anybody's gut feeling. We, we talked to other newspapers who had done it, we talked to consultants who worked with papers who, who made that decision. Uh, we talked to local people, we, we went to some of our community leaders and friends and said, hey, what do you, you know, here's what we're thinking about, what do you think the reactions would be? 
We went to advertisers. Uh, you know, we, we talked to a lot of people before um, coming around to that decision. And basically, I mean, we were, we were losing money on Mondays, you know. It was costing us more to deliver the paper on Mondays than it was than we were bringing in the door. So it was, it was pretty obvious that that was, that was the day in question. Um, so, you know, we, we decided to, to press forward and uh, started to communicate in November about the transition, which happened in January, January 11th. So the first day was, uh, the first day of the new paper was a Tuesday, but that the day before on that Monday was the first day of no Monday uh, print edition. And I think we took 600 calls that Monday. And a lot of them said, where's my paper? And for people who are regular readers, you know, the, they were laughing because we we communicated a lot. I mean, there was something in every day, of, and we're going to stop doing the Monday thing, and you got to go to your digital subscription. But about half of those folks, um, so every every print subscriber, a digital subscription comes with it, but not everybody wants to use that. And about probably less than half of our print subscribers have ever gone on the website and, and looked at stuff. Marianne's one of them. Never looked. So, um, but, uh, so we knew we wanted those folks to, you know, to try to, to a, a lot of those calls were people saying, well, now I want to get on and look at the Monday, so how do I do that? So we were, you know, prepared for that, of course, and, and so we've walked all kinds of people through it, and, um, that's, I mean, we've had thousands of people now accessing the Monday edition that way. And, and, and meanwhile, you know, our number of people who are digital subscribers have grown, uh, grown 40% in the last year. Um, so you can see more and more people going, going that direction, you know, that once you get the hang of it, it's, you know, especially for people who use tablets, something like, a, like an, an iPad, um, we have uh, so we have an e-edition, and that it, it looks just like uh, it's a digital replica of the paper. So you can sit there on your iPad and literally go like this and flip the pages. Um, so anybody who's ever reads on a Kindle or something like that, it's it's akin to that. Um, so the the one thing that I didn't anticipate. Um, so so we have a number of readers who are. Uh, you know, older readers generally who say, "I don't have a computer. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to look at it that way," and and so you know, we had made the decision that we didn't want those folks to miss out on on good local news content because of, of the Monday thing. So we have have repurposed some of those stories, some of the key local stories that that are in digital Monday. We also run them somewhere in print on Tuesday. Tuesday's paper is a little bigger. We take up a little extra room for some of that local stuff. What I didn't anticipate was the puzzles. That that's the biggest concern. So we run puzzles. The way I buy puzzles, you buy them for the daily, which is uh, Monday through Saturday, and then Sunday's a separate buy. So the Sunday, the puzzles that run in Saturday's paper. The answers run on Monday. <laughs> so if you're not going to read the Monday paper, you're not going to see the answers to the Saturday puzzles. This was, I took more calls about puzzles <laughs> in the last year than any other topic, for sure. And, and it, it wasn't just the answers, then it was the Monday puzzles, because if you're a puzzle doer, you know that they get harder as the week goes on. So if you do the Sudoku or the or the Ken Ken, or the or the uh, the crossword. Monday's the easy day, you know. And, fo and I, so many people like the the. I, I like the Monday one because I can do it, you know. So we've tried to find ways to accommodate um, to get those in somewhere. Uh, can't do everything, but but we've made made some progress there. Um, and uh, yeah, I've talked to uh, I, if if whoever you know when when the the idea that doing puzzles is good for your brain, that the marketing on that has been great because everyone knows it. Every person that calls me says, you know, I ha I'm getting older. I need this for my brain. So I'm like, okay, so we'll try to do that. Brain health. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, um, but, it, you know, all told, uh, we, had, we had 10 people drop the paper over that transition, which is pretty remarkable. I mean... 
honest to God, I, I have changed comic strips and had more people quit. Um, <laughs> pe- people, you know, some, they usually come back, but a lot of people will quit over something. So, um, so that's, that's pretty remarkable. And we've had great, great feedback on the paper, and I feel like, I mean, the new size and the, the quality of it. Um, but it, it, yeah, it made for a very crazy year, but uh, we're feeling good about where we are right now and uh, continue to do our, our COVID reporting and beginning to see some, some uh, light at the end of the tunnel, we hope. And uh, yeah, so I'd uh, entertain any questions you might have. Questions, questions. Do you like the, uh, do you like the new five, the feature old and read? And uh, I wasn't just, Fishing on my phone there, I didn't mean to distract you, but I wanted to check to see if Bob was on. So Bob is on the Zoom. Oh, great. So I just want to make sure that... I have a meeting with him at 1.30, so I'm probably going to get a bunch of grief. Sorry, Bob. Let's just go ahead and do that meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's my review. Hi, Bob. There he is. Uh, I, uh, my wife and I love the paper. We love the size of it. We think it's great. Uh, there seems to be more news in it, which is excellent. Uh, but her uh, comment was, I-, I love that they made the type larger. And uh, I think that's an illusion because isn't it the same size? It's not smaller. It's not smaller. It is the same. Yeah. yeah. It's and the same. I think it's I because think of the quality of the paper I and think the it quality is too. of the print. Yeah. Yeah. When we, when we, to, the reverse of that is when we went to, to Color Web and Cedar Rapids and we redesigned the paper a little bit um, and again did not change the type size but everyone thought we did and took a lot of call you know and I'm like just hold it up I swear it's not any different yeah. but you know little things like the amount of letting the amount of space in between the the columns the how you know the dark how, how dark the ink hits right. the paper the whiteness of the paper all those things are, are factors and this is you know that there's a little it's just a little better quality so i think it does we've heard that comment too that people think it's uh bigger yeah um i love the new format i i, I didn't miss the monday going away because we have the e-edition and with five flag center um, we're announcing shows on Tuesday. We've announced them on Mondays. We're still getting the same results. So the people are starting to float over to the, to the Mondays. What I really enjoy is the trending, your top five trending stories online. And I'm not an old guy yet, so I don't really open up the obituaries. But sometimes somebody's name will pop to the number one spot, and I'm like, well, who died? who's that guy? Who died? Yeah. You know? And I'm like, wow. Okay. So, but... But if, if, if it starts beating me out, if I'm like rank three to a dead guy, I get kind of worried about it. <laughs> no, but it's, it's fabulous. Yeah, it, I, I, really, I really do like the whole, the whole ranking thing. Uh, the other, one question I did have uh, is every time you log on, you have to log on. There's, there's, it used to be able, you used to be able to log on. You stayed logged on for, I don't know, a week or two. And now you got to <laughs> log on like all the time. Is there any way to change that? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that should be happening. Is it, is it the app? Is it going from one device to another? On I'm on a desktop, so I don't have you always in the, If you're always in the same place, yeah. it, that shouldn't be happening. Oh. If I flip back and forth and go from phone to my iPad to my yeah, desktop, to, yeah. then I then that happens. But if I'm if I'm staying on the same one, it, okay. I don't think it should. So, yep, I, I got somebody who can fix that. I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> hey, I'm just happy to get it. <laughs> Yeah, the um, we we've done we did revamp the web website a little bit in in uh, advance of this, and I think it, it's got a nice clean look and some of those features. We're also doing a whole lot more email, so you can get on email lists and then you know serve the news up kind of by category. Um, we redid websites for our, our biz, business times, Biz Times magazine and her magazine. So just kind of a lot lot little access points digitally that has has really made a difference. Well, amidst all the challenges you get to face with the advent of uh, the Internet, um, I feel some sympathy for you, too, on another aspect you haven't talked about, and that is trying to keep carriers. Yeah, that's a big issue, too, and, and something that we're very concerned about. 
um, you know, and, and in a lot of departments, like even even uh, the the press room, you know, distribution, all of those categories. But yeah, carriers has been keeping carriers is an issue for sure. All of our district managers um, are trying, you know, they all have some paper routes that they do once in a while because they're shorthanded. So if you know anybody who wants to be a carrier. We've, we've always got openings. I always feel bad when I call and say, well, I'm sorry. I've looked very, very hard, and I don't think it's out there, but I don't think I got my papers. Yeah, yeah, they do a great job, but it is yeah. it is it is tough. That's, yeah, it's I a big commitment calling. to do every day. I had uh, one other question. You talked about the... Uh uh, the, the, the Telegraph Herald, but you, you own some other, Woodward Communications has some other papers. Can you talk anything about uh, Dyersville Commercial or Pass Bay, Cascade Pioneer or any of the other papers and how, yeah. how they've done and, and, and are they being printed in Platteville now too? And how's that going? As a matter of fact, uh, as of last week, they are. Uh, well, Dyersville, Cascade, and Manchester, uh, uh, those three papers, we own those three papers, and um, they, have, they have been printing there for a while. But then we own some papers in um, like Mount Vernon, Lisbon, uh, uh, Anamosa, Marion, that area, and, and those papers had not, we'd been printing in about five different places, and so now all of those, just as of last week, are now printing in, uh, in Platteville. So we have a team that's housed at the Telegraph Herald that, that does the layout of all the papers, all those weeklies. Um, they, they, they send all that copy in, and we have a central layout team. And that's, that's fairly new development, too, just in the last uh, couple of years. But, uh, yeah, they're very, very smooth and efficient. We also have three weeklies up in the Verona, Wisconsin area, Verona, Stoughton, Oregon, Wisconsin. Um, Fitchburg, <laughs> uh, um, and there's uh, then we have uh, radio stations in the Appleton Green Bay area and Two Rivers Marketing in Des Moines. So yeah, kind of. A lot of a lot of similarities. Um, it, it's hard, you know. It's not really my my uh, division, so I don't I don't know, uh, you know, the ins and outs of that as well. I think Dyersville, Cascade, and Manchester we pay the most attention to because they're in our coverage area. And we we share a little content here and there and know those folks a little bit better. Um, and same thing. I mean, hit definitely hit hard by advertising. Um, you know, the decline in advertising and making some of the same changes that we are in terms of, of trying to bring more people into digital, um, beefing up their websites, doing the email newsletter thing. So, uh, but yeah, I, I'm sure they've all, they have all taken similar hits. But I think, I think Dyersville, Cascade, Manchester are particularly strong in that group. I noticed in the real estate uh, section over the weekend that the uh, entire third floor is for lease now in the Telegraph Herald's building. Is that true? It, it is. Uh, I mean, we, we, as I said, we've got more space than, than we need right now, and we have talked about what if we remodeled our building and condensed uh, the, everything onto the first, first floor or first two floors. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we would fit. Um, so just just trying to you know creatively look for ways to, to bring revenue in the door and and still maintain our downtown presence and, and have an opportunity to to renovate the building it, it's kind of a long-term plan I guess but you know if if we had somebody that wanted to lease it you know may be able to expedite that so who knows with everybody working from home suddenly Space uh, office space has a has a new look in 2021 than it did two years ago. So, but it well, is uh, uh, a, a potential revenue producer would be you could sell the elevator. <laughs> I mean, you won't. It's always a possibility. Yeah, right here. I think people can hear me. Uh, we actually got the paper because of the pandemic, and I just were. Did you pick pick up any numbers at the beginning? Um, we certainly got more digital subscribers. I don't know um, straight circulation if there was uh, Bob. Can you nod? Did we get more more print subscribers in the pandemic? Do you think? Yeah, so so. It was like a <laughs> little bit, little bit. Yeah, um, I don't think it was it was a significant thing, but we definitely see more and more people. Uh, coming to to the website and I think and I'm sure reading the print edition as well but um, 
I'm just going to look. Bob, Bob gave me a few key stats. Uh, eh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it was, uh, <laughs> am I doing okay? Are you going to complain about it? I'm not always a, a crib notes person. So. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I, was on, I didn't know if you knew me or not, but uh, uh, we had a very slow... Um, uh, but steady decline on the print subscriptions, and that didn't change in the pandemic. So um, the uh, so the, the digital has really come on strong, and so the, the pandemic didn't help us. It didn't hurt us on the print side. But um, in general, I think the pandemic and the steps that we've taken on the digital side have really helped uh, jumpstart the uh, digital subscriptions. And then we've also been chosen as one of five newspapers in the country actually in North America, to participate in a Google News Initiative where uh, we are learning how to better um, market our digital subscriptions. So that's been very helpful and given us the, the tools and techniques to help grow that part of our business. Does anyone else think it's like a little creepy if you were doing public speaking somewhere and suddenly realized that your boss was kind of secretly watching from his home and then could chime in? Is that, isn't technology awesome? How, how'd I do, Bob? Did I miss anything? You know what, Donna Long was just commenting what a great job that you do as a speaker and how humorous you are, as well as factual and stuff like that. And I said, you know what, you're a pretty damn good executive editor too. So, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I think that might have been your performance review right there. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, Bob, it's good to see you. Don't be a stranger. Yeah. I was planning to be there. I, I feel a little terrible. I was planning to be there, but I just got back from vacation and I'm quarantining. I did, I did get a COVID test this morning. Hopefully it'll come back negative, but I'd just rather be safe than sorry. Makes sense. All right. Thanks, Amy and Bob. Everyone, have a good week. We're adjourned.